we've seen how diffusion signals deconvolve with a response function to produce the fiber orientation density. And we know that the response function is an ideal model of signal response from a voxel comprised of only a single coherent fiber bundle. However, diffusion signals in real tissue originate not only from water moving along axons, but also extracellular water. Furthermore, each voxel of brain tissue also has other structures, such as neurons and gutial cell bodies, which contain water with limited diffusion that also contributes to the signal. By only using a single response function, we ignore these other spins and force all the NMR signal to be represented as if it originated from fiber bundles, which may lead to poor fiber orientation density estimates. In this segment, we'll show how compartmentalization models and multi-shell imaging can address this, and even provide additional information about the anatomical structure of a voxel. As we've seen before, the angular positions of signal measurements in Q-space are determined by the direction of the diffusion gradient. Additionally, the distance of that point from the origin is proportional to the B value. As the B value decreases, through shorter or weaker gradients, the position gets closer to the origin. With a B value of 0, no gradients in any direction are used, and is the S sub 0 variable in the Stegskultaner equation. By using the Stegskultaner equation, once we measure the signal with no gradient, and one point along a diffusion direction at a B value we set, we can then determine the diffusion coefficient, which is the only remaining unknown term. Once we've calculated the diffusion coefficient at one location, we can then change the B value, and use the already calculated diffusion coefficient to predict what the signal would be at any other B value strength along the same gradient direction. If we then go back and actually sample the signal at these B values, we find they are exactly what we had predicted, however, only if the medium is homogeneous like a cup of water. Interestingly, if our sample is instead comprised of brain tissue, we find they often do not match the prediction based on the Stegskultaner equation. To see why, let's look at an example voxel comprised of an axon bundle, extracellular water, and trapped intracellular water. As we saw in the B-value segment, after an RF pulse when the dephasing gradient is applied the spins lose coherence, then, when the rephasing gradient is applied spins regain a portion of their coherence relative to how far they diffused. If we had used a longer, or stronger diffusion gradient, our B value would be higher, and more coherence would have been lost from the same amount of diffusion. This decoherence causes less signal through a smaller net vector. If we separate out the spins from this voxel, we can see why the Stegskultaner equation is inaccurate in brain tissue. As the B value is varied, the signal loss from each of these populations is scaled exactly by the Stegskultaner equation, at its own diffusivity value. However, by only measuring a single B value we have no way to distinguish between these spin populations, and assume all spins experience the same type of diffusion, averaging them together homogeneously when we calculate our single diffusion coefficient. If we increase the B value, we can now see our estimate does not match the actual measurement because it does not account for the subpopulations of spins. For example, these trapped spins continue to contribute large amounts of signal even at very high B values as a result of their diffusivity being far below average, ultimately resulting in higher signal than we predicted. To account for subpopulations of spins we must measure the signal at multiple B values. By determining how much the signal varies from Stegskultaner based predictions, we can estimate what percent of the voxel is comprised from these populations, which are termed compartments. To use these compartmentalization computations in addition to what we've already learned about diffusion, we collect data at multiple B values. One example of this is a multi shell approach, which is similar to Hardy but at multiple B values. We can construct a more comprehensive model to fit this multi-shell imaging data, indicating that the signal at a given B value and angle is comprised of several components. A response function convolved with the fiber orientation density represents signal from axonal diffusing spins, and is one compartment. Signal originating from extracellular diffusing spins, intracellular diffusing spins, 
and noise are represented as simpler terms because they are equal in all directions. By accounting for these other signal sources, we can improve our fiber orientation density estimate, ultimately creating a better representation of the underlying anatomy. The relative contributions of these compartments can also be used as additional measures, which may be useful for diagnoses such as early detection of white matter degeneration. This concludes our segment on multi-shell imaging and compartmentalization modeling.